Hello, welcome to Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. I am Skix, your host. With me today is Lamar Kellywood, a stand-up Hi. comic. Um, Lamar, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Lamar. I'm from, uh, originally from New Mexico, uh, but now I, I live in Utah, I live in Utah for about a decade. Um, so doing stand-up, um, uh, probably about a, a decade ago now. So I, uh, that's, that's mostly what I do. Uh, I also like draw comics. Uh, I like to like make posters, like I like illustrations. Uh, sometimes I like, I'll make sketches, uh, but mostly comedy, mostly comedy related things. All right. Well, um, the the premise of the show is that we're talking to weirdos that is people who are outsiders in society in some way or another tell us the way or ways that you are a weirdo as much as you're willing to divulge <laughs> oh what i the thing about like uh how i started doing like performance which is funny because it's um i'm sorry when i started doing stand-up it was just like, it's so easy to not take it seriously because it's just, it's goofs. It's all, it's all a bunch of laughs. But um, when you start thinking about it also, when, once you get like good enough that you're not constantly thinking about what you're saying, then you have, you have an opportunity to think about like, how am I performing it? Like, how is that impacting like how my performance is being uh, seen. And if I don't, uh, if I don't think about it, then like I uh, am doing a huge like disservice to like how effective it is as a tool while I'm, I'm already on stage. Like if I learn how to uh, like convey um, things more that are more natural, like, um, uh, just basically like kind of just watching your like self this is the only thing i can think about is like um recording myself and watching how it what i think is natural is actually distracting so if i learn how to um uh learn how to make my body do what i'm trying to convey more um if I get better at that, I can like make it more natural. I can, and then once you start to um, once you start to get serious about something like that, like to a level, like you kind of uh, realize that you are you after a while that you are just learning how to perform, and like you are learning like any other any other craft. But uh, before I got into uh, like learning that, like um, I would just get in trouble a lot. Like I would just like, uh, uh, if there was no venue, there was no um, thing that I was doing that was an outlet for maybe like my creativity or like, or just my like um, my energy and uh, my need to, do things because I would already like I already like uh like to make things like uh I made a, a giant taco giant uh, a giant taco that's a costume for my, my last Halloween and I made that in I think I made that in four hours from concept to beginning and it was on Halloween but it it hit me and I ran to the store and I bought all the stuff and uh have a giant you know have a giant taco but um i didn't realize like that uh that i had a, uh, adhd because I have, I have adhd so i'm like i, I was i was actually gonna kind of slyly ask because that story sounds very much like a <laughs> like a, a a combination of impulsiveness and hyper focus that that, that uh, also also in that family yeah uh, kind of very familiar it's uh it's cool 
like a rush of like uh, motivation and then like the laser part is crazy how the first time i heard the phrase of it i was like oh that's exactly what it feels like is like i'm like totally in the zone and finally what i want to accomplish is like getting done so it's like feels really great because so many times like it's so difficult just to get anything done that's cool to like you're like also like excited that you're doing something for so long that you like don't want to stop right because like that's how i was with like illustrations where i would like i would stay up for like 30 plus hours like trying to get something done because like i was afraid to that if i stopped that i wouldn't get it finished or something like stuff like that sure and uh, if, if if only we could focus that on purpose it would be like a superpower though you know because you, you you can't focus it on doing the household chores you, you, typically not anyway i always like i uh i always find it difficult to like monetize that stuff yeah but now now <laughs> Now, now I uh, I got this really good idea for um, just like things to sell because um, I've been working on illustrations for so long. Uh, been working on illustration now for like longer than I've been in stand up. Just trying to like understand it, but not being able to like have the opportunity to like take formal classes, but like also not really liking like the structure of like academia but like i didn't know that was like because of adhd that i was like had such a hard time in the classroom and that like it it like it holds me back when i have to do other classes that are like that i don't my, my brain doesn't care about right. but it's like i still have to do all that stuff and then i get like I'm tired and it's like it's too much for me to i didn't know that was too much for me to handle until i tried it so I was afraid to go to school for illustration because I thought about I would just get that would happen where I get really burned out and that I would the rejection of it would make me not want to do like art anymore. Like I was also afraid that of of that. So I just just learned at my own pace, which is like really slow. But you know, I learned how to do it. Uh so I make yeah, I'll make like stuff out of cardboard. I uh I make stickers. Uh, I'm making some of my own uh, stickers. I'm gonna put them on um, little bottles of ranch, little bottles of ranch dressing, and a uh, sticker. It's um, it's gonna be bottles of uh, Skinwalker Ranch dressing. <laughs> All right. Just so I can like, just because it's so stupid, and uh, I'm sure I can get people to buy it. I'm sure because it's so dumb. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, check it out. And then I can make like any money. <laughs> so I can like, yeah. Do you have like uh, an Instagram or something that I could uh, link the, the fine folks to? Yeah. Instagram is uh, at Lamar Kellywood, which is my name. Very, very uh, easy to remember if we know who you are. Excellent. Uh, for those watching at home, I'm now going to show you a couple stills from Lamar's collection. Whoa, 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 what's happening right now? All right, well, um, okay, so you, you've uh, divulged that you have ADHD, which is definitely a, a weirdo trait. Um, and for many of us, at, right from childhood, we start to realize we're a weirdo, but we don't understand why. Um, yeah, now definitely. in um, in white America, there's another way that you're a bit different from from the majority, isn't there? Yeah, I'm native, right? So and, there's like, yeah, and th that is I don't part know of your, any other part of your act too, right? Yeah, that's because I like know maybe one other native comedian. Um, yeah, and that's like recently, so I finally know one other native comedian. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, is, uh, am I am I remembering right, uh, Diné? Yeah, it is. It's Diné. the The name of a nation is Diné, or uh, Navajo Navajo Nation, is where I was uh, born. Is where I grew up. Have you seen the book? We've had a little real estate problem. No, no I I know of it, but I haven't read it. Yeah, I I, I got it. Uh, 
just recently. It's really interesting. I, I never would have, uh, for those who haven't seen it or, or haven't heard of it, it's a history of basically stand-up comedy among Native Americans with not oh, a little of kind of general history of, of Native, Amer Native America too, because there's, you, you kind of got to know some of the history to know where some of the comedy is coming from. But there's, it, it's an interesting story. I recommend it. Um, well, how like uh, it is kind of like a reflection of the culture, uh, especially like learning just like any comedian. It's weird to know so much about people. Then you learn like their backgrounds of someone who wants to be a performer who like, you know, tells jokes and stuff. It's really interesting I, that um, I'm, I'm excited for like more native people to do comedy. Uh, that, that would be like really great. Uh, so I wouldn't be so like, it wouldn't be like, I wouldn't be so unique, but it would be like, it'd be fun because there'd be more people doing it. But it is, it is interesting because I, especially in Utah, I know very few like uh, people of color comedians. So it's like, it's, it's interesting. I, I like that it's a place where there's a, there's no reason why anyone should like find anything that I'm funny. Like they don't owe me anything. Uh, so like doing open mics and stuff, it's, it's nice because like I genuinely know that it's the it's the comedy that's working. It's not just that I'm just a familiar person or I was like in a familiar familiar area that it would it would just be like uh, yeah just familiarity more than like the things that I'm writing to actually be funny. Uh, and uh, a side note, I, I do want to be very clear. I'm, I'm not saying that people of color are weirdos in, in, uh, in, in that way. Weirdo is uh, a badge of honor uh, for, for me. And, and, and basically, I just mean not like outside, Typical. uncentered, not, not centered, you know, either, either marginalized or outsider, um, whether they be artists or, or queer or whatever. Um, I just, I just want to be super super clear that that's not the message <laughs> yeah that's not the message um cool uh i think at this point i'm going to cut in a clip of your set from the gonza rising boop, 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 boop. hello i'm from yeah hi i am um, it's going pretty well i i am from new mexico i want to talk about that for a minute like later uh, but I, I am a boy, just like, <laughs> just to get that, just to get that out of the way. Uh, I have a pretty cool, uh, really, really awesome girlfriend. Uh, she's the one that said earlier that we fucked up at Chili's. She's like, that's what I, she's so awesome. She says, she hasn't just said that to you guys, she said that to like everyone for like the past like day and a half. It's pretty funny. They, everyone, like, is really receptive to it. They're like, oh, man, I love fucking up chilies. I was like, what? Why is everyone on board with, like, I just really love chilies, like, a lot. People like, people like getting fucked up at chilies. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I like to, I usually like to have, like, a drink where I'm, like, doing stand-up. But I always feel like it's really weird because I'm, like, because I'm Native, Native American. And I feel like it's a, it's a weird stigma for like Native American people drinking. And like, it makes me like, it bums me out. I, it makes me mad because like, when I think about it, when you think about it, like, who wants to be sober through a genocide? Who wants to be sober like, while it's happening? Like, isn't that the, yeah, right? Isn't that the best time to fucking get lit? Like, isn't that like, yeah, I don't want to see this. How about, how about the end, how about the bottom of a bottle? Fucking what? I like, it makes me mad because I'm like, uh, I like, I, I feel like America is a hypocrite. I'm like, fuck you, America. I'm like, you're not even sober at work. I hate you. You're hypocrites. Like, if, if, like, if the food industry didn't have cocaine and weed, like, they would just collapse. Our whole society would crumble. I can't drink booze on stage. How dare you? I don't know why. I don't know who I'm mad about in that situation. I'm not, who, I'm not sure who this is the enemy. Uh, I feel like, 
it's like <laughs> I feel like I I have like uh, in my brain I have like uh, I have like uh, the vices in my brain which like I really love like having and uh, like drinking but I was like going too hard like in my mid twenties drinking too hard and I was like I gotta chill I gotta cool it on that but like in my mind I was like vices are like a deck of cards and like I didn't want to like I, I don't want to reveal too many because like I was like I don't know what's under there because like it's like booze sugar like food and then what if I go too deep like I don't want to uncover weird inside stuff that I never wanted to know about myself like like give up drinking give up smoking give up sugar and then just like what what's next just like next cards like oops I'm a serial killer now like ah uh, that's it the only thing that will quench my thirst is blood of the innocent, stab, like, just stick to the booze. Just, you know, just, I'm just hurting myself with that one. It's, it's responsible. I feel like it's, I like that you laugh at that because that means like you, you understand what I mean about that. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's weed. Sweet. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, it's funny cause like, I, uh, it's hard to, it's not hard, it's just I get tired of telling people that I'm not Asian, that I am Native American, cause it's just like, it's, it's exhausting, it's exhausting, it's probably my fault cause I like, you know, like, I eat, like, I eat Navo tacos with chopsticks, that's confusing, I did that, I did that to myself, so. <laughs> I have this haircut. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what haircut I have. That, that's what I learned. It doesn't matter what haircut I have. I just have this face, and I'm like this height, so like, just forever. Just forever. Uh, I work at a, a Korean company, and like everyone there thought I was Korean, so I was like, damn it, it's real. I was like, it's real, because like, if people, if Asian people, that's where, like, that's where they come from. And if they thought I was Asian, I was like, oh, I can't lie anymore. I have to accept it. <laughs> I can't. Uh, sometimes, like, oh, it, like, when I was a kid, my dad used to, like, he thought it was funny that I, like, looked super Asian. Uh, he, when we moved to Houston in front of Mexico for a little while, and he would take me to this, um, Asian food store, or uh, food store, Asian, uh, like, uh, restaurant, right? And, uh, he brought me there, like, every other day, because a lady there thought I was, thought I was Chinese. He's like, hey, look who I am. He, like, just bring me. He's like, here, free, where's the free food? Here he is. He just cut my hair like a bull haircut. Like, yeah, I brought him back again. Where's the egg rolls? Ten of them, extra crispy. And I was like, and then as a kid, I was like, I feel, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm being exploited for goods and services, like, like a real Asian child. It's too authentic. It's too real. I don't, I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> it's dumb. Uh, I, I, I like. It's really weird. It's really weird to explain people like certain concepts of things. Like, I don't know if you guys ever heard the concept of um, self stereotyping. So like, this is just shit that you don't have to worry about. Like, what what does that even mean? It means that like, I don't want to like paint myself into like a weird like corner where I'm just like, I'm like I'm profiting off of my own like image, like self-stereotyping is, is really weird. Also another thing I learned is that like um, Asian people were like taking up roles like as native people and I feel like wouldn't that be cool if I did that reverse? Like I just started taking up <laughs> It's just super controversial. How far do you think I would get? I would probably think I'd get pretty far, then it'll be like reveal like, oh my god. He's secretly, well, that would be stupid, like this Asian actor that we all, that we all is, uh, think is beloved, secretly native, like what? Oh, I just thought that, and that's not a real joke, I just thought that, I just genuinely thought that that was funny, how stupid that would be, like reverse. Um, from New Mexico, like, like, it's, like uh, was mentioned earlier, and uh, I love it, but it's like, it's, it's a different place, it's like, um, it's a lot tougher, so it's, a lot, it's, a lot, it's kind of calloused, it's kind of dry, like maybe from the heat and the sun. Like, uh, like for instance, like a, um, I don't know if you noticed that, but like you should, like if you're in public, like you shouldn't cry, like they don't like that. There are no emotions, like don't show emotions, like 
Not unless like you're injured. You got something have to have an excuse for like I have to have a reason. Like I'm not crying because my grandma died. I'm crying because I'm eating this bowl of nails. Ow! Like ugh. <laughs> it's everything's rough. If you if you look at a New Mexico flag, if you like really look at it, if you like examine, it's, it's the Zia symbol, right? It's yellow and red. But if you look really close, it's actually just four fingers flipping you off all the way around. It's like fuck you. <laughs> Go home. You're like, oh my god, how did I never see it? Even like our most renowned food, like our some of our best known food, like uh, green chili, it's delicious. I love it. It's like uh, I love it so much. But even like even that is like really tiny fists just punching your taste buds. Just like fuck you. I'm like, ow, why is it delicious? Ow. So I'm sweating. It's so good. It's like why. Why does it be, have to be aggressive? Why can't it be? Why can't it be kind? Um, why, <laughs> the first time I ever did stand up was in New Mexico. That like that toughened me up real quick. Uh, I was on stage, and then, I, then no, no one liked it. I went up to do like grabbed a microphone, and I was like 12 years old. I was like 12 years old, right? And in my mind, I'm like these fucking idiots don't even know what's about to happen in front of them right now. A tiny child is, is gonna ascend to the eternal pantheon of, of like great comedians just about, just in front of their eyes right now, and it just bombed. It was bad. It was, no one laughed. Everyone hated it. It was uh, it was my family. It was my family like, crowd. They were like, boo! Someone threw a tomato at me from like a 17th century execution. Uh, my grandma stood up. She was holding a giant picture of me. She, she stood up. She just tore it in half. She was like, "Boo, suck!" And then I ran away. And then I still did it because I'm like uh, a sadist, I guess. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I just love. No, it's not. Uh, I I I, lo I love New Mexico, but it's like I don't know why it has to like be so like. I, was, I don't know why it has to be like made out of punches. I don't, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm really happy that like I'm ju I'm like doing a little bit better and I'm not depressed. That's like super important. I'm super happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. Because before I was like poor and depressed and I was just like not working. That was not a cool combo. But I was just like, wake up in the morning, I'm just like, let's do this. So I was like, just do like, I would just like start doing poor people stuff. I don't know if you know, like, um, like using lotion for hair gel, like this works, <laughs> stays, stays up. Just like, um, uh, there was like the, the toilet, the toilet saver, the toilet seat, like uh, guy that goes on the toilet seat. If you take that out and like wipe your face, it sucks up all the grease. Poor people, poor people tips. Do you know how you can do that? Um, and then like, if you, have, if you have to go like on a date with your poor, like it sucked because like, I just remember like, oh, I can like go to the li library and like there's a magazine section, just rub magazine clone, just like just uh, trying to get some of it on me. Oh shit, it's raining outside. I'm gonna, go out I'm gonna run in between rain clouds, just looking at someone, <laughs> just rubbing like two months old GQ on my body. I'll be gone, I swear. <laughs> um, what was another important thing I did? Oh, like, I, <laughs> I was donating so much plasma, right? It was scaring me. I was donating so much plasma that I, I, well, after a while, I was like, I don't know if it's the plasma money that's like getting me to the next plasma that's saving me or if it's like the last plasma donation that like got me to this plasma donation. I was like, how long can this last? I was like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like uh, like entropy is gonna win. Like I feel like I had a, a solar panel and then it was connected to like a flashlight and I like, pointed the flashlight at the solar panel and I was just like, oh, let's see how this ends. Hopefully not just like a sad man balloon with no blood <laughs> on the sidewalk trying to make it to the dollar taco thing across the street. Just like trying to make it. Um, I'm super glad I have comedy. I found out that I have ADHD recently. Yeah, that would have helped. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> thank you. That would have helped like, like 15 years, like 20 years ago, like so many years ago, that would have helped. 
Oh, uh, because I would like get in trouble, right? Like all the time. Uh, they like they and I I didn't I didn't know why I was like come impulsive. Like one time, I was like had this great idea, and I was like I'm gonna make my own money. Like I'm gonna and I <laughs> counterfeit. I'm gonna counterfeit money, but I didn't know that's what it was called. I just like had this great idea. I was like, why don't people just print money and then just give it out? And I was like, it was like, I was, it was smart, but then dumb, because I was like, that's genius, but like, because I discovered counterfeiting, but I was 13, like how didn't I know that was like super not good. So like, and like, it was weird because I never like, I never put that much attention into anything in my life. Like I was working, like I was sweating, like it was a drawing board and I was like, no, shh. And I'd crumple up and throw it back, throw it in the trash can. And I was like, in my mind, I was wearing like a tiny, like lab coat and I'm like, Back to the formula, god damn it. And I'm like working and I'm sweating. And I made these counterfeit dollars that were fucking awesome. They were so good. So good. Like, um, I made a bunch of them, like just ones and fives, because I was like a criminal, not an idiot. I'm not trying to get busted for having counterfeit dollars. Ones and fives, strictly. And these things were so good, so good. Like, I could fool vending machines. I was like, boom, Gardettos for free. Yeah, right? Doing like a dance, yeah. I was like, I was beating the system with every single bag of overly sodium chips things. I was like, yes, take that. I don't know. So I'll take that Gard Gardetto. I don't know how I'm taking. I'm stealing from your pocket now. Uh, and I was like super excited because they like they they like they work so well. And I was like, uh, I was making so much money. I was like buying so many things, but like. Um, I didn't know that like it was super illegal. I found out like how counterfeit, yeah, it's a federal crime, and then I got really scared, and so I stopped doing it. And uh, if you're like wondering what like my dad was doing this whole time, he like he found out what I was doing, and he was like, "Oh, cool, tell me how it works." He's like, "He's like, how's it going there, sport?" He like leaned in. He's like, "How's the what's the counterfeiting?" And I'm like, "I'm just gotta get gotta get these colors right. I don't know what it is about." And then I found a new problem, which like, because I was like, got bold, I was like, I'm gonna hand these in to people. But the thing is like, they don't feel like money. It just feels like copy paper. It's just like thin, like no weight. It doesn't feel like money. So what I did, my guy just got a great idea. I just like crunched it up, just like mash, just roll it up. Just like, sh like you know how you get that one dollar, it's like been shoved into like countless pockets and like, weird, yeah, like countless bras probably, and like, it's just like goes to the dryer a million times. It feels like, when it, when it touches you, it feels like it's like a flaccid dollar. It's like, ah, uh, it's like, how is this dollar warm and feel like skin? Like, ugh, I'll take it, but Jesus Christ. Like, even if, like, if you wanted to start a party, you'd be like, nah, we gotta get an ATM machine, and you're not gonna be able to snort coke out of this flaccid dollar. That's the kind of dollar that I was, that I was going for. And it worked so well. I don't know what it is about the flaccid dollar. Like no one questioned it. Like they just took a boom, boom, boom. And then uh, and I found out that it was illegal. I was like, oh no, I gotta stop doing this. It's not cool. And, uh, and then the second thing that scared me from it was like I had this prototype dollar. It was one of the first ones I ever printed. And it was a mistake. It had George Washington's face on both sides. <laughs> it was like, Oh, like heads, I don't go to jail. I'm just kind of flip it like a coin. And it's just like, and then, and then I stopped. And then I stopped doing that. And I, uh, and I just started stealing directly the things that I wanted. I just, that's what I started doing. I'm so glad that you guys had me out. I'm so glad, I I'm, hope you guys have a good rest of your show. So what, what do you think of the, the Gonzo Rising uh, scene? You, you've, you've done stuff with us a couple times now, right? I've, it was really good. I really like it. It's like, um, it's cool being in the, in the show. I, I really like it. And I, lo I love the performances. Uh, they're really good. They're stuff that like, I, it's, it's better, it's so good when someone come up with something that's like better than like my own imagination. It's like so good. And they use so many like types of media, so many like, 
because it's like you have to learn how to what kind of like musical arrangements that they want and it sounds like a lot of them it's like a lot of detail sort of a lot of like execution I always, i'm always like um impressed by like uh like something like the physical acts like the rehearsal and like and like uh the conditioning that you got to do and then like it's like funny that i don't like i w- it feels weird that i don't ha- like i it's cool that they can do that but it's funny that i don't have to do that like i don't have to spin on anything or like <laughs> Well, but I it's mean, but it's cool because we're doing different things. You, but you it's like I'm honing your 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 act as well. Yeah, I mean, if they if they if I got one of the guys who was like really in peak physical condition to do stand up, like it would be ridiculous because like we we got good at the, our own special thing that we're doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if I I found anyway with, with a lot of performing arts, if you really really develop your craft and you're really good at it. The audience will have no idea how much effort that was. Yeah, that's crazy. I feel it, like that's one of the craziest things. I think that's crazy about stand up because it looks so like deceivingly like easy. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I I I M C, which is stand up adjacent, shall we say. And and I do improv, but but like pure stand up, I find that very intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, I did a uh, improv. The um, did the uh, what I can't remember the name of the show now, but it's uh, you do a, a, a small set and uh, a group, a team, a troop of improvers do a scene off of the stand up that fun. you uh, yeah, uh, it's a uh, it's a monthly show that I wish I remembered so I could tell you about it so you could go, but oh, it exists when you remember. Like, when you remember, yeah. send it to me because that that sounds amazing. Okay, um, that works. Something I'd, I'd want to be part of too. Um, and uh, and after the show, one of the improv uh, guys from the improv troupe, he is telling me how like, well, it's really cool. They learn how to do that, but that's how. But I'm thinking the same way about like improv. It looks so difficult. I was just telling him like, I have no idea how to be a part of a team. Like, I don't know how to like play off people and like. I, I, I'm not good at like, um, like being, yeah, just, and then like, and he was like thinking, he's like, yeah, because like, if I, that's like what I like about this is it's part of a team. He's like, yeah, there are strengths. Like, you think that this is difficult, but I think that's difficult. But it was cool to watch them do it. They're really good at it. They're way better than I, than I am. I, I still want to go, but I know I'm going to like, it's going to suck. Like anything sucks when you start doing it, but like I don't, it's just gonna like I'm embarrassed to suck, so that's preventing me from doing it. My, my, uh, one of my first improv uh instructors, her her mantra was dare to suck. Uh, oh man, I'm I'm embarrassed. I know I have to. That's the thing, is like it's like learning how to skate, it's like you're just gonna fall, you're just gonna fall down a lot, yes, and yeah, you just, that's the only way you can learn how to do it, which is like uh i was i was reading uh this thing about improv and and they're like if you want to take improv they're like i recommend you like don't learn anything about it because you're like you're gonna put too much stuff in there right and it's like it's better to just like go like without yeah without feeling like without any idea of what you're going to do so i still haven't done it but i still uh, i i i need to because like I'm back in the city, so I I can do it. So I have no excuse. So I'm now I'm going to. Yeah, you know I teach an improv course for beginners. Oh man, yeah, I need to. Yeah, that I need to do. <laughs> like I just have to. I just have to do it. It's like uh, I just have to jump in and Gotta acclimate. Yep. If you try and creep into the cold water, eventually it's going to hit your testicles, and that's uncomfortable. You got to jump in all at once. Be bold. <laughs> bold um have you ever had any like really bad experiences doing stand-up like just just a terrible flop or misstep or just or heckle have you ever been heckled yeah but not like really bad just like a couple of yeah just a couple of things but not like not like continuously or like like very maliciously 
probably because sometimes, it, especially if I feel nervous, like it'll, I can feel it speed up. That's one thing that like I had to learn how to um, not do. Because especially, it's funny because I didn't know that I had to sl- learn how to slow down too. Because yeah. yeah, like yeah, just talk too fast, just fast, 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 and like um, I remember um, inviting people to watch my do stand up when I first started and I would be like, how was it? And they would be like, I don't understand anything you said because you were talking too fast. It's like, Oh, okay. You got to slow down. It happens in improv too. You, you, you get nervous and you tend to speed up in part because you don't, you don't want there to be silence. You're afraid of the silence. Yeah. Um, but with, with comedy, there's timing involved. You've got to have those beats. You've got to have those moments and it's really hard to trust them. Um, yeah. And, and the same absolutely happens with improv. You've got to, sometimes your character, sometimes your scene requires that you stop and take a breath, you know? Uh, That's I, like, yeah. I've noticed, I want to, yeah. I, I, well, I've noticed uh, stand-ups uh, more and more seem to bring water with them on stage. And I think that's partly just so you, you, you sort of force yourself to take a beat there. Yeah, it is nice. It is nice that you have something to like, to stop with, take a beat. Do you have anything you would like to share with the, with the viewers at home that I haven't no. uh, brought up yet? Just uh, like, just Instagram and Facebook, same thing, Lamar Kelly would. Uh, Twitter, same thing, at Lamar Kellywood. Do you have any gigs and, coming up? Uh, I don't have any gigs coming up, but I would make, I draw things. So check that out. It's, uh, it's their jokes. I draw jokes and I sell wrench dressing now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, and we'll see you next time for Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye. God bless you all. God save the king. It's, it's the work of the devil. You'll feel better after you drink this. Grog? 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 I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Come to that. Yeah, oh, bad here. Giant cardboard taco, and uh, I made it super fast. I ran to, and then I, I put it on, and then I went to a Halloween costume, and I was a Navajo taco. Yeah. There you go.